10 News begins with breaking news. Our breaking news right now in the North County, a body found in a yard. I'm Jason Martinez. I'm Virginia Chow. I want to get right to Melissa Masiha, who is in the 10 News Live Center. Mel? Yeah, a pretty shocking discovery. That body found in South Tremont near Vista Way. We have a story right on 10news.com, and I want to show you where the street is. Right here, not too far from the ocean. All we know right now, a man was found lying on the grass at a home there a little after 8 this morning. This is what the area looks like. Now, police are calling this death suspicious. Investigators currently on scene. We also have a crew heading there right now. Of course, we will update you as soon as more information comes in. Jason. All right, Mel, thank you. And today, many neighbors just trying to get their lives back on track after witnessing that mass shooting in the middle of a pool party on Sunday. 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala joins us from University City with the mood of that neighborhood. Looking at the area I'm in now at the La Jolla Crossroads apartment complex, you would never know what happened here just two days ago. This leasing sign is back up. Students are waiting right over there to get picked up to go to their classes. But for some people, things here will never, ever be the same again. It's just a horrible reminder, you know, every time I go near that place. Sukanya Govindarajan moved to the complex only eight months ago. Although she's out walking her dog Rufus today, she can't get herself to take their usual route, which is going toward the pool. Instead, they walk in the opposite direction. The pool has been cleaned, but there's a lock on the gate and a small memorial outside. But to her, no matter how peaceful things look now, all she can think about is what happened here on Sunday. Like many neighbors, she's trying to understand why someone would take the life of this mother of three, Monique Clark, and shoot six other people, all while sitting casually by the pool. My husband said he had seen a whole bunch of people just partying, having fun, you know, and who would have thought that, you know, it's going to turn tragic like that. It's just horrible. In University City, Mimi Alcala, 10 News. Now to this developing part of the story, a witness to the University City mass shooting says the gunman gave a chilling ultimatum. Kayla Wong says she was in the hot tub when Peter Sellis opened fire at that pool party. She thought the first shot was somebody opening a bottle of champagne, but then she heard more pops and realized what was happening. Wong and her friend quickly jumped quietly out of the hot tub and hid behind a wall. While there, they heard the shooter telling people to leave their friends behind or be killed themselves. And they said, can we at least help our friend? Because I saw her and she was lying face down on the floor, blood all over her back. Um, and he said, no, I said you can either stay and die or you can leave. So they just left her laying on the floor. Wong says Celis was unbelievably calm the entire time. That's him there sitting in a chair with a gun in his right hand. She says she's having trouble processing everything that happened. Counselors have been made available to the residents of that apartment complex for the rest of the week. We also discovered Celis spent the hours before the attack getting breakfast with his two daughters. And according to a family friend, his teenage kids didn't notice anything unusual about their father that morning. The family friend says the man they watched fire his weapon at innocent lives is not the devoted father they knew, but they say Celis became a different man when he drank and he did claim to have had several stints in rehab. Police say Celis was distraught over the breakup of his girlfriend when he opened fire and that was the motivation and that there was no race as a factor here. Some are questioning that though because Celis was white and a majority of the people he shot were either black or Latino. Right now, local activists and clergy are gathering to talk about that very thing. The National Action Network is going to be holding a news conference that should start any minute now. 10 News does have complete coverage of the University City shooting on our website. You can check 10news.com for new information as it comes in. Mel. And I'm following news here out of Wimbledon, England. Firefighters investigating this fire right here. It started at a storage yard near Wimbledon's Greyhound Stadium. Now the video having trouble playing, but you can see the thick black smoke here visible for miles across London. Right now the flames are out, but they are still looking into what started it. The investigation, Virginia, just beginning. Thank you so much, Mel. Happening today, Chula Vista Mayor Mary Salas will deliver her third State of the City address. She is expected to talk about the, the things she has accomplished this past year as mayor. We met up with her ahead of today's State of the City to talk about what she plans to do next. This coming uh, year is going to be a, a year of actually a lot of job creation, so a lot of opportunities for people to work right here in their own hometown, which is great. We want to see that the commute times are lesson for people 
And so we're working hard to make sure that we have a balanced and thriving community so people can actually work where they live. Oh, yes, the State of the City address is tonight at 6. Two men are on the run right now after stabbing someone in a parking lot in Mira Mesa last night. The victim says he was just standing in the parking lot of his apartment complex on Carroll Canyon Road. He says the men either mistook him for someone else or they were trying to rob him. Police say those men started to chase him around, then stabbed him in his right side. He went to the hospital but should be okay. Police have not yet released a description of those men. Happening today, the drunk driver who caused a deadly crash in Mira Mesa will learn his punishment. Sentencing scheduled this afternoon for Christian Evangelista. He pleaded guilty to driving drunk, slamming into a car last August, sending it through a fence. It killed 19-year-old Tutom Lee just days before her 20th birthday. Evangelista faces up to 15 years behind bars. New today, President Trump considering raising the federal gas tax. He says the move would help pay for his big infrastructure plan. The president did not say he is committed to the tax hike. The last time the federal gas tax went up was 1993, but of course, just recently here in California, lawmakers approved a 12 cent gas tax increase last month. That takes effect in November. This is a developing story. We're getting a closer look at all the damage from the severe storms in the south. Four tornadoes blasted through Texas, destroying several homes and this church. The storms have killed at least 18 people while destroying people's homes and flooding roads. In Arkansas, police just discovered the body of a four-year-old boy who was swept away in floodwaters. He and his toddler sister disappeared on Saturday. She has not been found. Nearby friends and family are remembering the 12 year old girl they lost in that flooding. Well, I was shock. I was at church and so just started praying because I can't imagine because we've had all those family to lose a sibling to lose a child. We just can't imagine There's nothing like it. So she's going to be missed. We love her, but she's watching out over us right now. Oh, and the next round of severe weather is set to move in tomorrow. New today, the State Department issued a travel warning for Americans who are heading to Europe. They're concerned about the possibility of another terror attack there. The warning mentions recent attacks in France, Russia, and Sweden, saying terrorists tend to focus on tourist destinations. The alert expires on September 1st. Escondido police have a suspect in custody for a murder that came to light because of Snapchat. Witnesses reported that they discovered their friend had been killed and named 19-year-old Salvador Sanchez as the suspect. Police believe Sanchez and the victim fought and Sanchez killed the victim, then dumped the body in Valley Center. The victim has not been identified. We sure should learn more about this after an autopsy today. Developing in Lemon Grove, an arson investigation is now underway after a fire tore through a camper. Yeah, it was loud. Sirens echoing through the neighborhood, smoke filling the sky. We first had the story on 10 News at 11 last night as it was breaking. The camper, a total loss. In fact, you can see just how badly it was burned as firefighters moved through it. Somebody who lives at the home next to the camper says she had been arguing with a man. She thinks he may have set the camper on fire before taking off. Investigators are looking into that. Nobody was hurt.